gets to put the costume on. And you know, actors are like, as soon as they get the costume on and a prop to play with, they start to play. And that's exactly what he does in the cell. He plays the part of being a lawyer. And what appealed to me about the play was, although there's, there isn't the slapstick element of Laurel and Hardy, the two characters have similarities to them. And his audience is foul. He, you know, he gives his Hamlet to Fowl, but he gives the audience his bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Fowl is a bit like Stan Laurel in that he's, he's just eager to please this guy. He'll go along with whatever this guy says because he, he wants to please him. And that, that's a very kind of Stan Laurel trait, you know, whatever Laurel, um, all he wants to do or says, he, he'll go along with it. And that's one of the things that appealed. Would you like to hear some Latin? Well, only if you had the time. Actus non sit rus, nisi men sit rea, filius nullius in flagrante delecto. Understand it? <laughs> well, I'm no scholar. Oh, you most certainly are not, but I had to be. We all had to be in my day. Then we'd sit for the examinations. Smalls, mods, greats, trippos, little girls week after week, rowing men fainting. Ah, Indian students, Obviously, with a the comedy, there's a timing, but I think with a lot of comedians, t to get comedy, they they look at how people behave and people's mannerisms and things like that. Comedy is about observing people, and I think that's one of the kind of the key things that can help with creating characters. And you are a man of very little education. Oh, that's true. Yes, one only has to glance at you. Those curious lobes to your ears, the line of your hair, the strange way your eyebrows connect in the middle to see that you're a man of very limited intelligence. Well, agreed, quite frankly. You think you killed your wife? Well, seems to me. No, Mr. Fowler, let's look at this objectively. On questions of birdseed, well, I have no doubt you may be infallible. But on a little point like this, might you not be mistaken? Don't answer. Well, why not, sir? Before... He's waited years, in fact, he's waited his whole career for this one moment. And unfortunately, through he's been uh, where they sit in the court. Uh, he hasn't been in the most advantageous position for years and years and years. And so when they've done the selection, he's never been picked out. But on that particular day, uh, one of the barristers is ill and he gets his seat, the optimum seat. And... Um, uh, and he gets selected, and so he goes down to the cells to, uh, to talk oh, to Oh, well, that's the beauty of it, Mr. Powell. No, you came to me under a system of chance, invented like the football pools, to even out the harsh inequality of a world where you have to deserve success. You, Mr. Powell, are my first dock brief. Your dock brief? You couldn't explain. Of course. Prisoners with no friends or money exist, luckily. You're one of them. And they're entitled to choose any barrister sitting at court to defend them. That barrister, however old, is given the brief and is remunerated on a modest scale. Busy lawyers, wealthy lawyers, men with better things to do, creep out, then double when they're done. In Doc Brief, there is a lot of opportunity for you. I mean, there's the scene um, where they are rehearsing your defence. Yes. And so they, they, they reenact the courtroom. To, to practice the thing, and, yeah, and you right. become the, the judge and one of the witnesses, and then uh, somebody else as well. So there is this opportunity for you to um, find other characters and to clown around, if you like. On the head, simulate the dirty grave. You see, already you look anonymous and vaguely alarming. Now, Mr. Fowler, forget your personality. You are Sir Tommy Band living with your widowed sister in a drafty great morgue on Wimbledon Common. Digestion, bad. Politics, independent, moral, conservative. Favourite author, doesn't read. Diversions, playing snooker on the basement of the morgue, peeping at the lovers on the common, and money being given away on the television. A man in love with capital punishment, corporal punishment, and a younger brother who's accomplished at embroidery. 
a small. Alarmed man, frightened of the great dog he lives with to give him the air of a country. I don't think those things want to be done seriously. Oh, no, no. No, I mean, it's definitely a comic play. Um, but it, I shouldn't then morph into Tweety at that point. It's, but also, I it's think... It's creating that, that believability, I think, sure. in, in this character, not thinking, oh, that, that's Tweety trying to be someone else. Is that... Well, first of all, you've got to find the excitement of firstly getting... The, the brief, but under all that is the sadness that actually all that work, all that training, all that waiting hasn't done him any good whatsoever, and he's actually not as good as he thought he was, and that's and that's a terrible thing to spend your whole life and then find out that actually you're, you're no good. And he describes in the play, you know, all the hard work he's had to put in to get where he's, he is today. And, and actually, he knows, he knows the job. He knows the business. He just can't deliver. And whether it's because, um, because he's totally inept, or whether it's because he just hasn't had the, uh, the chance to practice and use his skills. It's like being an actor. If you came into drama school and you don't get a job for 35 years, you're not going to be very good, are you? If it pleases you, my lord, members of the jury, I should have said... If it pleases you, my lord, members of the jury, I should have said... Members of the jury, is there not one of you that craves peace? Peace. The silence of an undisturbed life, the dignity of an existence without dependence, without jokes. Have you never been tempted, members of the jury? I should have said. Members of the jury, you and I are men of the world. 